It's Friday, November 18th. Let's talk PlayStation. All right, two things on the docket before we get into our news stories. Um, so yeah, the TV actually is set up. I went a little bit bigger this time, um, but I love it so far. It's totally awesome. Looks great on PS4 Pro. Or PS4 Pro looks great on it. And then uh, the other thing is, this LTPS is be being recorded a little bit early, so keep that in mind in terms of if, you know, some big news story comes out, and I'm, for some reason, not talking about it. Because as of right now, as I'm recording this, this is what's going on in the world of PlayStation. Because uh, tonight, Pokemon comes out at 12 a.m., and unfortunately, that is the one non-PlayStation game that will take me away from any good, anything related to PlayStation. That is going to be my next escape for the next, like absurd amount of time probably like three three to four months i won't be playing anything playstation probably um i spent way too much fucking time on that franchise as you can see from like all this shit over here and there um that's the one thing people usually don't know about me even though it is always in view anyway um let's go to our first news story ps4 firmware 4.06 is available right now and improves the quality of system performance or whatever rewarding they're they've been using recently um it seemingly seemingly does nothing but i guess the one thing pe some people are saying that it actually fixes is um uh, an audio issue with ps4 pro and certain um 4k displays i don't have this issue so i'm not entirely sure but um yeah what it, somebody's saying it's just quality quality uh performance so the past few weeks we've actually been talking about the uncharted movie and how it's actually kind of making some progress uh but the last of us movie is something that we haven't really heard about in over a year and now we actually finally have an update and the update is that yeah it's like in movie hell as these things typically end up falling in uh so the producer sam raimi was discussing what's going on and they're more or less saying creative differences uh it, it, there's like a, it's in a point where nobody can kind of get the project to move forward a little bit even though the last time they actually did work on it they had a script read and everything and everything seemed to go well Maisie Williams is attached to the project um she's you know penned it to apparently be like to play as Ellie but um yeah they're saying that like nothing's going on right now so that one's still pretty far out probably so one thing that has been cropping up this past week as we spend even more time with our PlayStation 4 Pros people that bought a PS4 Pro a number of issues are coming up within certain games uh Battlefield 1 is having some issues um Dishonored 2 I believe is having some issues Watch Dogs 2 is also having some issues and they're not issues in relation to the base PS4 game, it's actually PlayStation 4 Pro. The the actual, you know, playing the game on PS4 Pro is, is the issue at hand. Some people are saying lesser performance, uh, whether it's a lower frame rate, um, jagged edges, um, you know, game crashes. Basically, the games are noticeably, are, are running noticeably worse, I guess, visually is, is the part where it looks better, but, um, you know, certain aspects of the game are performing noticeably worse than the base game, which is... Um, you know, initially you think to yourself like, oh, that's pretty surprising because this, this whole lead up to PS4 Pro clearly was this, this sort of, you know, alienated thing between, um, people that aren't necessarily used to this idea because it's a completely new idea to release a console like this. One that's slightly more powerful, but your games are still going to work across, you know, both machines. This is a new idea, but it alienated people thinking, oh, well, you know, does that mean the base game of games moving forward is that going to be just the shitty version uh you know is the pro version always going to look you know way better and have the better performance and the base game just going to start you know being you know like like shit and crap and, and perform terrible but that's not necessarily the case this time uh but you know the the thing is this is obviously a new thing for developers it's a new thing and it's not a new thing it's it's a new thing because for consoles this is like it's never happened before but it's not new because developers have been doing this with pc games for the longest time um when de a developer makes a pc game you know they put a number of settings within their games that will allocate to the um performance of you know whatever the player has for their pc so they're kind of um used to creating a game that's supposed to scale with hardware but you know i think it's the developers are, the developers this time are kind of having a, a and that's not necessarily a hard time but just sort of taken aback by you know, having to approach two different console versions on the same platform. You know, it's easy to have an Xbox One version and a PS4 version, but now you've got two PS4 versions and one that's going to be slightly prettier. Um, now, we've always, now we've been hearing from many developers that, yeah, we've, you know, we're used to this because we have done things on PC. I mean, uh, EA has stepped forward and said that. I believe Ubisoft has said that as well, that, you know, this is something that actually makes a lot of sense and um, it shouldn't be, you know, too much trouble or too many resources to, you know, properly do this. And they're actually on board with the idea. But at the same time, I'm sure it definitely changes the workflow or, you know, uh, at the very least, it's, something has to be done to make uh, PS4 Pro versions of the game possible. But the, the, the also caveat to this is that these games, 
like Watch Dogs 2, Dis Dishonored 2 and stuff, these games were being developed way before PS4 Pro. So PS4 Pro, uh, you know, dev kits were sent after the fact that these games were started development, and therefore Pro support was added after the fact. So that might have some sort of play as to why the Pro version isn't, isn't necessarily playing nicely all that well. Um, you'd have to imagine that if a game starting development today with both dev kits would maybe have better performance, you know? Um, this is all conjecture, of course. I mean, I'm not a developer, and so... You know, I could be full of shit for all I know, but that's just kind of how I see it. Um, I think moving down the road, and especially with, you know, Xbox One and, and Scorpio, developers are going to find a more sweet spot with, um, you know, doing these, you know, tiered versions of their games now for consoles. And that would make it at least slightly easier than what they've been used to on PC, because PC is a broad spectrum when, you know, you're doing a game there. But this time it's like, yeah, it's, you got to do multiple versions now, but you just got to worry about two of them. Two for PS4, two for X1, you scale it how you need to, you know, make sure everything works, everything plays just fine, and of course, make sure it looks good, um, and then you're off to the races. And for our final news story, kind of big news if this leads to be true, but PSN name changes might finally be coming. So this was actually sort of semi-indirectly revealed by a new patch for uh, the Unreal Engine. Uh, in the within the patch notes, and I'll display them to you because it's kind of hard to like under like to explain verbally, but it's more or less hinting at there's a new sort of structure and API in place within PlayStation Network and within the development approach of games that will, you know, basically this this shows that there's something being put in place within PlayStation Network that can change display names. So maybe it would be in a situation. What it sounds like is that the you know your your username would stay your username, but your display name would possibly change, or it's it's some sort of you know talking back and forth approach with the programming, which would display and switch different. Like I'm not necessarily, you know, again going back, not a developer, not a software engineer, not a hardware engineer, but you can look at the notes and um, you know obviously people that do know what the fuck this means. This is what it's kind of hinting at. This possibly means PlayStation Network name changes are coming. Um, interestingly enough, uh, if you're a Japanese PSN user, you actually have had the ability to do this for a while. But it's what I just said, basically. It's it's you can change the your display name, but your actual PSN username for sure is is you know stays the same. And I believe that carries through. If you still have to add another person, you still have to add their original name and their display name wouldn't work but um this might be a solution for psn name changes finally it's just like a, it's not a rumor because it's right there in front of your face but um this might turn it like maybe we'll see this um a formal announcement soon possibly at playstation experience i think that would that would be like a perfect announcement for psx psx is obviously an event for playstation fans you know that would be like and that's something that fans have been requesting for a long time that's not, i don't know that that's necessarily something you'd announce at like e3 like a trade show or something like that's this is an announcement for psx so if it's coming that would be a that would be a damn good time to do it so if it like and that's another thing too uh in my predictions video i think for this year you know i did it in january or whatever um i said i think psn name change name psn name changes are finally coming i think now is the time i think they finally have put enough resources and time and energy into it to really figure it out maybe maybe this is it you know maybe we can finally do it and i'm hoping that is the case those are some of the news stories i want to talk about you guys this week more ps4 pro videos so we did the ps4 pro size comparison video the awesome super dramatic awesome angular shots i took and everything unbelievably awesome video not really. I mean, it's it's okay, but check that out. And then also the, the noise test video. So you can actually see how loud PS4 Pro is um, and compare it to the original PS4 and the PS4 Slim. PS4 Slim actually is the quietest, but PS4 Pro, you'll be surprised by the, by its performance. Um, it actually stays relatively, uh, relatively quiet. You can check that out. I like how I just spoil the videos. Go watch them anyway. Do what I say. Come on. Come on, guys. We're homies, right? You'll watch my videos, right? That concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Rob Thank you all so much for talking with me, and I will see you guys next Friday.